how many times do you have to make the wrong decisions before you make the right ones? You know, you really have to conquer society and conquer the illusions of culture or the illusions of culture and society will conquer you and the desires of the masses will be far too great for you to ever have the will to suspend Seriously, how many times do we have to fail before we realize there's going to be a better route to take? The truth is, not everything that you see in society is the truth. And so many people in this world just look at something and expect it to be the end all be all I don't know where their cognitive capabilities went I don't know where their proclivity to surrender their cognitive functions came from I was lazy a lot when I was younger. But I always had a sense of who and where I was going. Even when I was fat and I was playing a lot of video games, I always had an idea of what I really ought to be doing. And when I look at some of these people out and about, they really have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. I think down, deep down, people know. People know whether what you're doing is right or wrong. But the thing is, is that I never compromised... my perception of innocent imagination. Innocent imagination is the key to understanding anything that you want in the universe. And one thing that I've been doing a lot more for the last like year and a half or so is imagining my death almost every day. And you might think, well, that's, uh, <laughs> yikes, that's pretty dark. Well, life can be dark, man. Life is <laughs> one brutal game. It's not a game to be played in society. It's a game against yourself. That's the true essence of the meaning of life being a game. Life between me and you is not a game. Life between you and you is a game. So I imagine my death every day because it puts me on a certain track of excellence. And it puts me in a mode of being of where if I died today... That would be it. And I know that I've done everything in my life up to this point to succeed in surpassing and transcending the stark echoes of the voidful death. There is no need for you to run from your problems anymore. 
There's no need for you to think that you are incapable of adjusting and disciplining yourself to become the most optimal version of yourself. Can you imagine if every single person in the world was on the spiritual path of excellence, quality, and self-improvement? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what kind of world we would live in? We wouldn't have any degenerates. We wouldn't have any glorification of obesity. We wouldn't have any glorification of promiscuity. There would be no glorification of involving children in any kind of harmful acts to disassociate their being to themselves. There would be no excuses. <laughs> but what kind of people <laughs> want to live without excuses? Can you think of one? Can you think of any kind of people? That's the kind of people I want to be surrounded by. People that don't make excuses. People that at least put in the effort. But the thing is, is that sometimes your effort is not going to be enough. And that's a harsh reality to face, right? That's a harsh reality to face. But you have to put it into perspective of understanding that as Tom Platts says, he was a bodybuilder in the 80s, 90s. He said, you've achieved failure. Congratulations. Now you can only go up. That's exactly how you need to look at your life right now. If you're in the midst of your life where things aren't going very well for you, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, yep, I've achieved failure. There's nowhere else to go but up from here. Really, that should be good news. <laughs> like it it sucks don't get me wrong it sucks it stings but at least you at least you did something about the stagnation of your life you know it's so funny to me is how people like specifically in relationship dynamics. It's very attractive for men to be able to have the multiplicity of options. But when a woman talks about her options as if she is showcasing all the, look at all the men that I've got. Look at all the men that are lining up to get with me. I don't think they understand that it's, at least modern women anyway, majority of them, don't, don't understand that that's not attractive for men. In fact, that makes us like you less. At least the men that aren't, aren't simps. And I've noticed this happening more and more recently in my life. It's it's like women are getting upset that I'm not taking them seriously enough. And I'm not talking about my viewers. I'm not talking about my subscribers. I'm talking about my personal life generally. And just talking about my observations in society. And the lies, like we've been lying to women so much. We've been lying to women so much. <laughs> we've been telling them that they can't be criticized. And that's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong to tell women that they can't be criticized. And it's wrong because because men get criticized all the time. And I'm not saying I'm not saying like, that's a bad thing. I think healthy criticism and critiques are very helpful. 
In fact, I openly ask for critiques of my channel because I want to know what you guys are looking for. And I want to know just the general collective consciousness that I'm speaking to and speaking with. So I'm not opposed to critiques, but I want a fair critique. I want a, a critique that doesn't that is not based in shame, that is not based in derogatory comments that attack my character. I want a critique of my ideas. I want a critique of the things that I have to say and not who I am as a person. I think most people want to be treated in such a way as well. So don't get me wrong, though. You can judge my character any way that you want. I already know that I have a calling. I already know that I have God with me. I already know that I'm here doing what I'm purposed to do. I already know that I'm making changes in my life to ensure that I have the highest quality of life that I can give to myself and to my future lineage and to my future family. I already know that I'm doing everything that I can each day to do that. And so, no, I'm not going to take certain people seriously, though, just because they critique me in certain ways. And then the women that are upset that I don't take them seriously, it's like, well, how am I supposed to take you seriously if... One just maybe isn't enough for you. How am I supposed to take you seriously if you're talking to so many different people all at one time? How am I supposed to take you seriously if you don't take yourself seriously? How am I supposed to take you seriously if you do not value modesty? If you do not value innocence to some degree, if you do not value family, if you do not value these certain things, how am I supposed to take you seriously? So I just ignore them. <laughs> and that's what you got to do with most people in the world sometimes. When they get upset and they just attack your character... That's not you. That's something else. And I heard a story about the Buddha recently where the Buddha was being attacked verbally and he just remained super calm and super serene. And when the guy left, one of his disciples, one of the Buddha's disciples asked him, like, what, how did he remain so calm? How did he remain so still? And the Buddha said something like, if somebody gives you a gift and you don't receive it, then to whom does it belong to? Something like that. And I thought that was a very interesting story and a very interesting metaphor for life. People that want to conquer you and not conquer the illusions of society they want to make sure that you remain in isolation they want to make sure that you do not have a voice they want to make sure that you do not have the tools or the resources available to you to do what you need to do to accomplish what you need to accomplish to have the experience that you were meant to have people oftentimes do not want to conquer their own desires because it to do so would be to destroy the illusion of who they think they are and i have to say it's so difficult to watch sometimes to to really see with discernment it truly is a gift from God discernment is 
but it can be a heavy burden at some points. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that this is part of the journey that I'm realizing more and more each each passing day that it, it it's almost more difficult to watch people than ever because they're just like most people are just so removed from themselves and integrated into the mass of society they just don't know who their authentic self is and it's just everything is an emotional response nothing is understood with a logical lens and even when they do stri- strive to make certain changes in life it falls short and they give up that's an emotional weakness is to give up. I I don't like being around people that are open about giving up. I don't like being around people that are emotionally weak. It it it's such it's just such a burden that that I don't need. Like I'm not there. I'm not there to help everybody like I can I can only help people that want to be helped and if you don't want to be helped how am I supposed to take you seriously and there's a song uh, by J. Cole (laughs) another rapper from years ago that I I heard it's a song called No No Role Models I think and the, the song goes something like she don't want to be saved, don't save her. She don't want to be saved, don't save her. And that's like most of the women out there today. And yet most of the men think that they can save most of the women that don't want to be saved or vice versa. Save yourself. <laughs> and and surround yourself with people that actually have similar views to you and actually have an understanding of what it's like to go through trauma and come out the other side stronger than ever before because that's what you're here to do on this channel that's what I hope I'm able to provide this spiritual sustenance for you is to give you courage and encouragement to get on the other side stronger than before So with that being said, peace be with you. Till next time.